This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas. Even if you have a knitting machine that does not have a ribbing attachment, you can make beautiful ribbed welts. I've taught several techniques for this, and I realized recently that I've never taught this particular method. It's pretty easy, so let's go ahead and try it. I want you to have some options so that you can use the method you like best. Now you will find this very useful if you have a machine with no ribber. For instance, an LK150 or a Bond or a Brother 350, any of those kinds of machines that are main bed only. Or perhaps you didn't buy a ribbing attachment and you just have a main bed. But you can still make great looking ribbing with a very professional looking edge. Let's get started. I started by knitting a few rows of scrap yarn. This waste yarn acts as a stitch holder and gives you an easy way to begin your edge. And I am threading my carriage with some very thin nylon cord that I'm using as a ravel cord, or you could say a divider rod. And I'm just hand feeding that. After I hand feed that, it's very helpful to put clothespins on the end. That puts a little extra weight on the ends of the work and it helps the stitches to knit off. Now my sample is going to be lavender colored and it is a worsted weight sample on a bulky machine, but this technique could be done on any flatbed knitting machine. The first row with the lavender is going to be an ordinary row of knitting, but I am tightening my tension all the way to tension zero. And then before I can proceed, since I did this so tightly, and you do need to do it tightly for it to come out great, you need to just go across and make sure that all the needles pulled under the ravel cord and the ravel cord knitted off the ends of the needles. And then I'm moving my clothespin on to it for a weight. And now I'm going to change the settings on my carriage and let's have a look at those settings. What I want my carriage to do is knit only the needles that I pull toward me, that is, that are fully extended into hold position. For this brother machine, have this NH lever on in and push in both part buttons and then leave it on tension zero. And now we're going to pull certain needles out and those will be the only needles that knit off. Now this only works correctly if you start from the left. So start with the leftmost needle of however many needles you have and use your every other needle pusher to bring out every second needle all the way across the work. And then if you find that your rightmost needle didn't come out, because if you have an even number it won't, pull it out too. And now when I knit from right to left, all these needles I pulled out will knit and all the needles I left in the back will be slipped. It'll just skip across them. And you can definitely see these longer loops where it skipped across needles. Now for the second row, again, count from the left and pick up the second stitch from the left and bring that forward and every other needle thereafter. Then go back and make sure that your end needles got pulled out. Now my end needle on the right was already pulled out, but I needed to pull out my end needle on the left. Then you knit to the right. Now there's a funny little procedure to be done here on the left. I'm going to zoom in on that. What I want to do is pull the knitting out a little bit and look at these short bits of yarn between the green ravel cord loops. 
and this very first one between this ravel cord stitch and this ravel cord stitch, I get it and I put it on the leftmost needle. Now I need to change my settings and put my machine on the settings for the eight rows I want for my ribbed weld. This is going to look like the sample I showed you a little bit earlier. I just have two things to change. I want the carriage to knit all the needles. So I pop out my part buttons on the brother. If I had a studio, I would turn the outer wheel from slip to normal and it would go ahead and knit. Now I'm also going to put my tension up to two and two clicks. Now the tension needs to be a couple of numbers tighter than the rest of the garment's tension. I want my ribbing to pull in a little bit. So doing this a little tighter than tension three will make it tighter than the rest, which I'm going to do on tension five. I like to do a swatch and make sure that I'm happy with my tensions. And now I'm going to knit the eight rows of ribbing. I will begin latching up the ribbing on the left hand side, so I'll zoom in on that area. The first thing I do before I latch is get my clothespins off and get my comb off. This is just easier to do without all that hardware. And then the first stitch I'm going to latch is the third stitch. I latch with a latch tool. It's this hook tool. To find the third stitch, I'm going to count across and the stitches are just above the ravel cord. First stitch there, second stitch there, third stitch just above that green line of ravel cord. And I'm going to put my tool just above that green line of ravel cord. And it will actually be in the loop that I want. You see the ravel cord forms this V down here and I go above the top of that ravel cord loop push in, and I'm going to unravel this stitch. So I like to just unravel with my fingers, just poke at it. You have to unravel all the way down. And the last couple loops are a little harder to get unraveled. There we go. You will notice that your tool is inside a purple loop or whatever color you used, but I'm inside a purple loop. And then I have a really big loop and I catch that in the hook of my tool. And the old loop's below the hook, it's below the latch. The new loop is in the hook, so when I pull it goes through. Then I have a loop that I'm poking out with my finger from behind. It's a little loop, it's the third row of loops. I just dealt with the first and second. Skip that third one. Go to the fourth one, which is more of a normal sized loop. It's not in the back like that third one. And pull it through. And then, after that, you don't skip anymore. The only one you skip is the third one. And I just latch the rest of these on up. I like to go straight in and straight out. It's much easier then wiggling through like this to get one bar. It's quicker to go straight in, straight out. Now, to put it on the hook at the top, which is our last step, I push my tool in until the loop is below the latch, and then I can put the hook on the needle and give it a little pull, and it goes right on there. Now I'm going to do the fifth one. That was the third one, as I count from the left. And that means I'm going to skip this ravel cord loop. I'm going to go just above that ravel cord loop. So I'm putting my tool there, and then I am unraveling that loop all the way down. I've got to get all these out. If any of them are stubborn, you can just take a transfer tool and put the point in and get them all unraveled. Now, once again, this is done the same way. First, 
I get this big loop in my hook. <laughs> Come on, hook open. I'm trying to get it in there. There. That one gets pulled through. Then there's a little loop hiding in the back that I ignore. That's the row three loop. I go to the row four loop. Row three is the only loop I skip. And then I latch and latch and latch. Don't worry, you'll get faster at this with just a little practice. Until I'm at the top, then I push in far enough to get my loop below my latch, hook my tool on my needle, and pop that loop onto the needle. And let's do another, and hopefully you'll get a really good view of just what I'm doing. I'm skipping this one and going to this one, putting my tool in just above my ravel cord, unraveling, poke it with my finger and get it to unravel, all the way to the bottom, then get the big loop. Skip the little third row and go to the fourth row and then get the rest of the loops. Sometimes we call these ladders. They're like ladders, rungs. And I'm going to do this all the way across. As you do it, I think you'll find it quite easy to see which ones to latch up because you're going to get them all except that little loop in the back on the third row. I'll be back when I have them all latched. I finished latching it all up and I put a weight on each end. I'm turning my tension on up to five and I'm going to do some rows of knitting and then show you how this looks. don't think of making lots of swatches as a waste. I hope you can think of it as a pile or a notebook of things that you've learned and accomplished. Here's my swatch and what I need to do is get the ravel cord and the waste yarn off. So I grab one end of that ravel cord and I pull. I just pull it all the way out and then the waste yarn comes right off. And then here is my nice little edge all ready to go. So I hope you enjoy this technique and that it comes in handy on your projects.